It's our story. Eleanor Smith, Atlanta, Georgia. I think, keep in mind, I, got, I became disabled 59 years ago. There were no parent groups. There were no parent magazines that we knew of. You know, disability was just a plain, flat-out tragedy um, in most people's minds. And there were four other kids in the family. I think the best things they were able to do for me, well, first of all, they lived 30 miles from the hospital when I first went in as a three-year-old. I was there a year, a solid year. My parents came five nights a week driving 30 miles and leaving four kids at home. I mean, and cars were slower those days. I mean, they spent hours on the road to make sure I had a visit five nights a week from them and on the sixth night, somebody from the extended family. Um, they also expected me to behave. I think it's because they had so many other kids and they'd also had a pretty uh, disciplined upbringing. But I remember being in the hospital and I finally could move my arms again because initially all four limbs were totally kaput. I could move my arms again and I was sitting with them at visiting hours and I had my milk and I started to lap it up like with my tongue and I said, I'm a kitten and I went lap, lap, lap. I waited and I said again, I'm a kitten, lap, lap, lap with my tongue. And my mom said, drink it right. And some feeling of relief came over me, like, okay, life is normal. They're going to make me do things like I ought to do. Uh, so, and they did. They had high expectations. They expected me to go to school. Like many other people, they did not expect me to be married. They did not expect me to be married. Um, when I was 12, or 13, one of my parents, I can't remember who, said to me, you're going to have to really get your education because you're not going to be married. And I remember thinking, I'm not? Wow. And I have, Pat's parents said that to her at about the same age. Um, I think they were trying to prepare us for what would seem to be a reality um, because, you know, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of men wouldn't want to marry a disabled woman, especially one who was not going to be passive. <laughs> if she's going to be a bitch on top of it all, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So given that we can't necessarily cook and clean as well, a lot of disabled women have become married, some disabled people, some not. I'm just saying that on the marriage market, a assertive woman who is also disabled is not necessarily the hottest commodity. Unfortunately, fortunately I became a lesbian which made life a little easier. And I have had, I have had some lovely partners and I've had a good sex life. It took me longer to know that I was sexual. I know you're told your body doesn't work and you're told that you're never going to get married which is kind of the same as being told you're not going to be sexual. Um, time went on and I was able to not, not follow my script in that way. Um, another thing my parents did, besides have high expectations for education and expecting me to, quote, just behave, be a, be a socialized person, they really did um, take me when they went, take me everywhere. I always assumed that every parent did that. But then I met disabled adults whose parents left them home. Not necessarily all alone, but they'd go off a lot. And the child was not included in their outings. And I, then I could look back and I'd say, everywhere they went, they took me. And I became grateful for that when I compared it to what happened to some other disabled kids in their families. So all in all, I think my parents did a, did, a, did a good job. They did better than average. Um, and that's what we have to compare it to, is what was all around them, how things were normally being done. I, I know that they also considered me kind of tragic. They were sad for me. They didn't let that 
be known, but at their fifth, and I, I knew that, uh, at their 50th wedding anniversary, they were videotaped. We weren't a very technological family, but 50th wedding anniversary, someone managed to bring out a, a uh, VCR, we call those things video machine, a camera. Someone managed to bring out a camera and videotaped them, and some of us were standing in the background watching. Keep in mind, they'd been married 50 years. And the interviewer, who was my brother-in-law, said, what was the hardest year of, the, of your marriage? And my dad said, well, that would have to be the year that Eleanor got polio. And then my mom said, and the second year was even worse, because then we knew she wasn't going to get better. So my brother, who was in the background with me, said, how, do you, how does it feel to have them say that? And I said, I'm not, I'm not surprised. It doesn't come as a shock or a surprise to me. Um, so it's hard to, a little hard to be a source of sadness to your parents. That's difficult, to be a source of sadness to your parents, just by who you are, rather than the fact that you got drunk and climbed the water tower down, down near City Hall. That's a different level of making him sad. Just by being who you are, to have automatic sadness for your parents. And that's part of my motivation, is to help, help create a world where parents, normal, automatic, regular parents, not special people, don't have to be sad when they have a disabled kid. Because there's enough support, enough acceptance, their kid's going to be expected, going to be expected to be a real person. We're so far from that. But the reason the parents have to feel bad if they have a disabled child sometimes is because realistically the supports aren't there. Realistically, someone's going to be looking at their kid and not wanting to marry them. All of that can change. The essence of the disability rights movement is to believe that the, that that discrimination and looking down on disabled people is as much a changeable thing as racism, sexism, anything else that you try to change structurally. Um, I'm not going to be alive at the time when a disabled child can be welcomed into a family with joy, just like, wow, this one's redheaded. Oh, this one has CP. We're a long way from that. But I don't think it's an impossible vision. The It's Our Story Project is a national effort to make disability history public and accessible. Visit us at www.itsourstory.org or on the It's Our Story Project YouTube channel.